In this UCSC Genome Browser tutorial, we're going to talk about a program called BLAT. BLAT is a search tool in which you can enter a nucleotide sequence and BLAT will try to locate that sequence in the human genome. BLAT has some incredible algorithms behind it and I really would like to make a video about those algorithms uh, later on. But for now, just consider that BLAT takes in a sequence of nucleotide letters, has to be at least 20 base pair, 20 nucleotide letters long, and it will search for that sequence somewhere within the 3 billion base pair human genome. Uh, so what would happen if I search for uh, a sequence that I'm just going to make up? So make up. This is called the fast A format, by the way. I start off with a greater than sign, name of my sequence, and then I'm just going to start writing letters. Which letters? Well, A, T, A, 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 T, G, C, A, A, T, G, C. I'm just making these up, and maybe Blatt will find it in the human genome. Let's see. C, 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 G, T, A, A, T, G, G, A. What do you think will happen? I, I don't know. Blatt did not find any matches. And that kind of makes sense because this sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23, about 25 letters long. And uh, a, a random sequence that's 25 letters long is actually not likely to be found in the 3 billion base pair genome. You can do that math on your own. It's, it's a nice probability problem. But obviously, um, scientists do not sit around all day putting random sequences into blacks. That would be a waste of time. But, but I will show you two things, two ways that scientists do use BLAT and why BLAT is so useful. So let's head on over to tab two. And I've, I've cheated. I've already entered two, uh, sequences for BLAT. Uh, these happen to be primers that I've used in real life to amplify a piece of RNA into DNA. Uh, so you'll see that the primers are long enough, they're longer than 20, so BLAT will be able to find them in the genome. And there are two of them because primers for PCR, by the way, polymerase chain reaction, primers tend to come in pairs. So let's submit these primers to BLAT and see if BLAT can find them in the human genome. I click submit and it did find exactly two results, which is really nice with 100% matches, by the way, you can see here. So these are primers. They are meant to amplify a strand of cDNA, which is the DNA that can be reverse transcribed from RNA. And as you would expect, the forward primer and reverse primer uh, correspond to opposite strands of the human genome. And if you're ever designing primers, that's really important. Otherwise, you, you will not get amplification. Uh, so we know that the primers map to reasonably close places because these coordinates are awfully close, at least up to the 10,000th place. But just to make sure that these primers land where we want them to land, we can actually go over to the genome browser from this link, and we're back to our familiar genome browser. So we're just looking at the forward primer now on BLAT. The forward primer is indicated by this black box. But we obviously can't see the reverse primer because it's, a, it's pretty far away. So why don't we zoom out 100 times? Why don't we zoom out another 100 times? Okay, that might have been a little bit too far. So we'll highlight, you can see the reverse and forward primers, and we'll see that they will amplify this very, very long sequence. Now in real life, I designed these primers to work in uh, reverse transcriptase PCR, which means that these introns, which we've discussed earlier, they won't be amplified because the RNA does not contain them. And in case you're curious, this gene, OPA1, it is a mitochondrial gene that is actually coded on chromosome 3. That is kind of neat. So we just saw that BLAT can be used to verify that 
primers will amplify uh, this, the sequence that we want. In this case, it was a cDNA of OPA1. And furthermore, uh, if you remember, uh, I'm going to go back quite a bit. Uh, if, well, I didn't, I didn't get it, I'm sorry. But if you remember, uh, flat returned only two uh, responses, which means that I should get the product that I want and nothing else. So in addition to checking on primers, flat is a really useful tool for uh, seeing where sequenced DNA comes from. So a few weeks ago, or maybe months, I submitted a sequence to my sequencing facility at Penn, and they said that the DNA sequence had this, had this, um, these letters. Uh, so it, they gave me a pretty long sequence back, but you'll notice that my sequencing facility actually didn't give me just the letters you would expect. Look at this K. Everyone knows that K is not a nucleotide letter, but it's in fact an abbreviation. It's a way for the sequencing facility to say, Sam, it might have been a G, but it might have been a T, and we're really not sure. But we know it was something there. And Blatt is totally cool with that. Blatt does not need only the A's, C's, T's, or G's. Blatt can handle these other uh, nucleotide abbreviations, and that's really nice. So why don't we submit this sequencing result and see where it actually came from. Now, wow, okay, so you see right away that we had one sequence to submit, but we got about 10 responses, 10 different uh, ideas that Blatt had of where our sequence could have come from. But you'll see at the top, one of our responses had a much higher score than any of the others, and this is probably the, uh, the correct map of the sequence. Let's go to the genome browser and see uh, where Blatt thinks this sequence came from. I see. So Blatt thinks that the sequence I submitted came from a gene ITGAV. That is an integrin, it codes for an integrin protein, which is a membrane protein. Uh, so this looks very different from from our last uh, Blatt results, in that it, it's very complex structure. We've got this black box, that's familiar. We have this white uh, arrow structure, that's not familiar. And we have these red dashes. So the black box means that Blatt said, yeah, this is a great match, perfect match, all along this black box. The red means, oh, I expected a different letter here, but it's it's not doesn't quite match on these red dashes. And finally, these arrow regions, they represent big jumps in in where this sequence that I submitted maps. So if you notice, the black boxes which represent good matches, good fits, they correspond to the axons. So this sequence that I submitted is not really from the genome, it's from the transcriptome in which the introns have been removed already. And I, I must admit, this was not the gene that I expected this sequence to come from. So I'm very glad that I blatted it, otherwise I would be working with the wrong DNA, and that would be bad. Uh, so I hope you learned how to use blat, and I hope you have some appreciation for how powerful this tool is. I could certainly never program it on my own. Uh, but maybe one day you will program something even better than Blatt, if you truly love algorithms. Um, but if not, Blatt will still be a great tool in helping you become a better geneticist or biologist. And I encourage that you use it. See you in the next video.